I used to live in Denver, so I was just coming back looking for a better barber or whatever. And I just came back to the old neighborhood. So when I came back to the old neighborhood, Hassan was here. And he was he was here. He was a different ethnic, so I was a little, a little weary, a little weary about it. But when I do see his people, like the Yazidi people, I mean their hair is just fresh. Stuff that you ain't never really seen, right? So I tried them, and then when I started talking to them, I just started coming, and I started coming more, and just never left, because this was always like home to me anyway, because I used to come here when I was a kid. This is the part where we can't talk too much. <laughs> So I'm a barber for 23 years. Uh, I currently own Golden uh, Scissor Barbershop here in Lincoln, Nebraska. This is my uh, third barbershop owning in the United States uh, after I moved from the refugee camps back in 1999 to New York. When I moved to New York back in 1999, early 2000, uh, I was 14 years old. We moved to a project where we lived uh, on the third floor. And this would be the first time me ever seen inside a barbershop. Pull up here. Got always to get a haircut. They might want weed. You know what I mean? They might want to meet up. This used to be like right here, this house over here. One person worked in here that was a barber. Then he, you know what I mean? Sometimes, hey, they were selling crack out of there. You know, that was, that was a, time when people were selling a lot of crap and back here would be a back door so that'd be even easier access that was the negative about it and right now this community is clean like you don't see too many cars come through there's nobody selling drugs no more over here there's none of that now we got birds back here if you wanted to find your enemy you could come here you know what i mean but now you can't do that. You can only come here and find peace. No problem, man. We will take care of you. Welcome to the neighborhood. So I met Hassan in June 2015. I was told about him by Eric. He was um, he was one of Hassan's clients prior to him having the barbershop. Um, and he just bragged about him all the time. And he said, I know a Middle Eastern. He cuts better than anyone in Lincoln. Um, so... It was a Tuesday on my lunch break. I was working construction here. I came to the shop. I waited about four hours for my haircut. Um, I got my haircut and went back to work happy, but I went back to work late. <laughs> Like he knows everyone on a personal basis. Uh, um, you got to see it on Saturday. We had a random guy walk in. Now he leaves and they're connecting with music, you know? There's always a connection with Hassan outside of just cutting, cutting hair. His music or any other activities involved in the community, everybody knows him and everybody speaks positive for a reason. He's impacted me in a lot of ways, honestly, but it all began when I had my seizures. Um, I had a lot of people in, in my circle at the time, and when I had my seizures, everybody was just out of the picture. And all of a sudden, I had my barber calling me, making sure that I was okay, because I wasn't showing up for my haircuts, you know? I was here every Tuesday and every Friday getting my haircuts, regardless of the circumstances. Um, and then all of a sudden, I disappeared. Say, hey, how are you? Is everything okay? He found out I had seizures. Went to Nebraska City to talk to me. You know, Nebraska City is an hour away for someone that was just my barber that, that speaks volume. I've been here since I was 72 years old, and um, Hassan's been around for a long time. He's known my kids. He's known me since I was a kid, and you know, he's been a good support with me, and he's just really good energy to be around with, you know. Excited. I'm just going to be laughing a lot. Just got so many funny moments. My cousin Lester, he, you know, we were kids, and we didn't have money to get haircuts. So 
Lester was the barber in our family, and he would cut our hair, you know. But Hassan was the one that really influenced him to be a legit barber, and that's what my cousin did, you know. And unfortunately, my cousin's not here today. Rest in peace, Lester. He passed away in a car accident, but he used to come in his barber shop all the time just to, to you know, cut little hair there to get the experience, the time, you know. And Hassan will let him do that, and that was one of the biggest, biggest influence is my cousin because my cousin, you know, that tells you you can do whatever you want in life, and you know, you go from a wrong path to immediately switch your life around, and you know, my cousin did that, and Hassan had an influence on him to be a barber for sure. We could inspire a lot of barbers and help them out, and I hope if this program go well. This is it. You know, how can I send more people to college? How can more of these youth become, find jobs after college? How can they potentially open their own, own uh, uh, barbershops and own businesses? And this is where these programs develop with Link International FC. This is where we come in with, with a nonprofit organization, Link International FC. So I was previously working one-on-one -on -one with these barbers, helping them with college hair design. And then I'm like, how can I invent a program? does not here in Lincoln, Nebraska. So the barbershop uh, mentoring uh, program, it, it actually, it means a lot to me because there's a lot of uh, uh, refugees that come to Lincoln, Nebraska. We're very diverse from Africa, from Middle East, from the Yazidi communities and from, uh, uh, from South America. It means a lot to me that we can have this variety of, 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 uh, of talents in, in, in you know, create more opportunities because a lot of a lot of kids do not want to go to college to be a doctor, and they don't want to maybe go to college to be uh, uh, lawyers. But there is something called barbering or beauty or cosmetologies that you can make a lot of money, help the community, open new small businesses. So overall, this program will help with developing the whole economy of our community. You know, create more jobs. I mean, everybody that opens a barbershop could hire three more barbers. And those could be more jobs, you know, and, and, and just it, it just building the community. It's something that I was passionate about coming from a refugee camp, is going through the sh numerous struggles and obstacles to, to find, to become a barber, and now to be able to help others. It's, that itself satisfied me a lot, like I'm helping others to pursue their dreams and to find their purpose in these fields. Uh, and I always say sometimes you don't have to look further what do you want to do? Just try to do what you love. You know, it could be a something, it could be a little hobby that you have when you were like a little kid. This can turn to a career. He's letting us know in America that, that we can do it. So when I'm looking at him and I'm looking at everything you come from, I can only relate to you from coming from like Omaha, poverty area, North Omaha, project area, or just growing up in a, in a, in a area where, you know, it was kind of drug infested. But him fighting to get over here, you know, seeing people die and all of that, and still can do everything that he's doing, he's letting you know that y'all can do it. He's letting every culture know that he can do it. If anyone were to ever come and get a haircut from Hassan at Golden Scissors, they'd leave a changed person. You know, he just, he just finds a way to make sure that all your problems and all your stress is just thrown out on the table and you're going to leave with a smile on your face. Plus, I mean, he's the best barber in Lincoln. <laughs>